In this section, we're going to take a look at the wizards that come with Oracle Application Express. We're going to walk through some of the different wizards to show you some of their capabilities. One of the important things to remember is the fact that some of the wizards are pretty simple. They ask you a couple of basic questions and then go off and generate their code. Some of the other wizards, however, are incredibly complex, ask you a lot of different questions, and have a lot of flexibility. You can go back at a later time and change around a lot of the things that you answered in the wizards if the requirements of your application should change in the future. Let's hop into our web browser and take a look at some of these now. Where we left off in the previous section was on this page that has a simple form on it based on the movie table. Since I'm logged in as a developer, I see these links along the bottom of the screen, Home, Application 111, Edit Page 3. If I was logged in as an end user, I wouldn't see any of these links. But since I'm a developer, I have the ability to edit the page that I'm running at any particular time. So I'm going to edit this page 3. This is really overwhelming for a lot of people who are not used to seeing Oracle application development pages. This page gives you an indication of all of the things that are going on inside of Oracle Application Express on this particular page. It looks pretty overwhelming, but after a while you'll get used to it and it won't be such a big deal. You can edit the page in what's called component view, or you can edit it in tree view. They both do the exact same thing. On the left hand side of the page is a column called page rendering, and it's exactly what it sounds like. Here I can enter code that gets executed before the header is displayed to the end user, after the header is displayed, before the regions are displayed, the regions themselves, after the regions, before the footer, after the footer, and something called dynamic actions. There's a page processing column where I can insert code that executes after a submit, that does validation, that does processing, that gets executed after the processing is finished, or something called an AJAX callback. I also have the shared components column where I can set different parameters and different attributes that go along with the tabs, the list of values, the breadcrumbs, the list, templates, and advanced security on the page. This all seems pretty overwhelming. There's a lot of stuff here. We're going to go through each one of these in depth. But for now, we're really focused on what the wizards are like. So on this particular lesson, we're going to focus on the regions, and we're going to add a new region to the page. We already have an existing region on the page. That's the form that's based on the movie table. And this was generated for us automatically when we created our application. We had that one page where we said, OK, we want to have these pages as part of our application, and this is the types of regions that we want on the page. Remember from our hierarchy, that there's a one-to-many relationship. So every page can have multiple regions on it. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to create a new region in the body section of this particular page. So I right-click on body, and I can say Create. Once I do that, I'm taken to another page where all of the different regions that are available to me are listed. If you remember from the previous section when we were creating our application, I said that the one page where you can define the pages and the regions that are going to be in your application does not include all of the different regions that are built into Apex. There are more. This is the page that lists all of the different regions that are available to you. So you see some of the similar ones that we saw in that wizard, but we see more of them. Not only do we see report and form, we see stuff like charts and maps and lists and calendars and help tests and PL SQL content. A lot of really cool stuff here. Not only is this defining what the region is like, once we select one of these guys, we can select a subset of different forms, different reports, different maps, different charts. And in some cases, there's even a sub subset to get us exactly what we want on the page. I'm going to start with one of the simpler ones to show you a simple wizard, and then we'll graduate to one of the more complex ones to show you what a complex wizard looks like. So I'm going to pick a form. And here you can see are all the subtypes for the form that we can create. We can create web services, forms, and reports on web services, SQL queries, procedures. I'm going to pick a form on a table or a view, which again is one of the simpler ones that are out there. So what does the first page of this wizard give to us? It says, OK, well, what do you want to build this region on? What table do you actually want to build it on? Where does movies come from? Well, movies comes from the fact that when we created our workspace, we said this is going to be the default schema that's going to hold all of the objects that we generate from the wizards. And we said that the movie schema is what's going to hold all of those PL SQL objects. Well, that becomes the default parsing schema for our application. When we come through here, that's why it defaults to movies. Just for fun, I went through inside of SQL Developer, and I granted a couple of selects to movies in different schemas. So I granted a select on this table called Chris.test1 to movies, 
And I also granted a select on OE.orders to movies. What does that mean? Well, since movies now has the ability to select information from different schemas, it shows up here as the different types of table or owners that I can pick. If I pick Chris, the only one that'll show up under table or view name is going to be the test one that I defined here inside of SQL Developer. If I select OE, the only one that's going to be available is orders. And again, that's because I created that grant statement. So I'm going to pick OE orders. I'll say next. For now, I'm just going to create it on page three. Do I want to use the user interface defaults? Here at the bottom of the page, I can list all of the user interface defaults that go along with this particular page. For now, I'm going to say yes, but I can go through and I can change any of that stuff if I want. Here's going to be the page name. Here's going to be the region title. Here's the template that I'm going to use for this particular region. Where does the template come from? Remember when we were defining the application, I had to select the theme? What did I say a theme was? A theme was nothing more than a collection of templates. This is where the template is coming from. It's coming from that theme. I could put this into a navigation region or a wizard region. It would make the page look really funky. But for now, I'm going to keep this in the reports region so that it looks kind of nice. Later on in other videos, we're going to take a look at changing templates around, changing themes around, creating all your own stuff. But for now, let's just take the default values. Do not add a breadcrumb region to the page. Again, that's fine. We're not going to do any of that. When I go to the next page of the wizards, it's going to ask me, OK, what's the primary key for this particular table? Do I want to use the row ID or do I want to select a primary key that's been defined on the table? There is one defined on the table already, so that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use the order ID. And once I select that, it says, well, OK, well, how is order ID updated? Is there some trigger that's out there? Is there a PL SQL function? Is there an existing sequence? There is a trigger out there already, so I'm going to select that, and it'll take me to the next page of the wizard. What do I want to actually show on the form? It's smart enough to say, OK, I know order ID is a primary key, so you don't want to show that on a form. So I'll pick everything else. And I can say, you know what? I really don't need to see promotion ID. I don't need to see that, so I can take that off. I can also leave this promotion ID on for now and go through and just make this a hidden field. As a matter of fact, let's do that. I'm going to go through later on and make promotion ID hidden because I really don't want to see that. But I'll keep it here for now so I can select it out of the database. What buttons do I want to put in this particular form? I look back on what I granted to movies. I only granted select privileges. I didn't grant movies the privilege to insert, update, delete. All I did was grant select. So it doesn't really make sense for me to show the create button, the save button, or the delete button. I can keep all of that stuff off. I could have granted all of the privileges that are available. And let's say I never want users to delete any information. So maybe I hide the delete button, but I give them the ability to update changes. What page do I want to branch to after I'm finished? I have to branch somewhere. In this case, I'm just going to branch back to the same page, page three. If I can't remember my page numbers, I can always pull that up and it'll show me all of the different pages that are part of my application. But I'm just going to branch back to page three. There's always a confirmation screen at the end of my wizard. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to create this new region. What's Oracle doing right now? It's going through and it's generating a whole bunch of PL SQL behind the scenes, storing it in the database. And then when it comes time for me to render that information, Oracle is going to generate a brand new version of the page for the end user based on these PL SQL packages. So eventually I get this back that says form on the table has been created successfully. I can either go back to editing the page or I can just run the page. 